Hello and welcome to another standard video here in the brand new standard format with the addition of foundations. Today we're taking a look at a cat deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. Since the cats got a lot of support and foundations, we've got some exciting reprints as well as some brand new cards. And one of the most important cards in the cat deck is Arabo, the first fang, a 3 mana 2 2 legendary cat, giving other cats we control plus one plus one. And whenever Arabo or another non token cat we control enters, we get to make a 1 1 cat token. This is not limited to once per turn, which we're kind of used to seeing now, so it's nice that we can make multiple cat tokens in one turn. And then we've got another new addition at 2 mana, the Sky Knight Squire, a 2 mana 1-1 one, one cat scout, and whenever another creature we control enters, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the squire, and as long as it has 3 or more plus 1 counters, it also has flying, and is a knight in addition to its other types. So the squire synergizes quite well with Arabo making lots of cat tokens, as we can then also keep growing the squire. And both of these also synergize perfectly with a Roaming Throne, which when it enters can name cats, so it's now also a cat in addition to its other types, so it will also trigger Arabo, and thanks to Roaming Throne, Arabo will now trigger twice each time, so we can immediately make two cat tokens, and every cat token that enters now can also maybe trigger the Squire twice, and then we've got a Regal Caracal as another reprint at 5 mana to top off our curve, giving other cats we control plus one plus one and a lifelink, and when this enters we get to make a pair of 1-1 one, one, lifelinking cat tokens, so that also benefits from Roaming Throne, now doubling the number of cat tokens as well. And then Helpful Hunter at 2 mana can draw a card when it enters, so also nice to double with a Roaming Throne. And then we've got some more reprints at 1 mana with Leonin Vanguard, a 1-1 one, one that triggers at the beginning of combat on our turn if we control 3 or more creatures, getting plus 1 plus 1 and gaining 1 life, so that can also trigger multiple times with the Roaming thrown out. And then a Savannah Alliance, a Blast from the Past, used to be a powerful Chase Rare at 1 mana for aggressive white decks, now it's just an uncommon and a role player as another cheap cat we can deploy early. And then rounding out the deck, I'm trying two copies of Kutzel's Flanker, which we can play at instant speed to maybe catch the opponent off guard, especially relevant at growing the Squire at instant speed, and if we also have Arabo, maybe getting an additional cat token in the process. And then we can also use it as Graveyard Hate, or just as a way to gain two life and scry two, which can also benefit from Roaming Throne to dig towards another payoff card. And then a patchwork banner will give all our cats plus one plus one while also tapping for mana, which is useful when we're trying to cast some expensive spells like a roaming throne or a caracal. And then a three copies of a get lost as our removal spell of choice. We do have quite a few options here at two mana. Could also try Soul Partition, which has the advantage of exiling our own creatures in response to removal, so we can replay them. Ossification, also an option to exile opposing creatures or planeswalkers, since we are running lots of basics to support it, but I found Get Lost to be the most versatile overall. And then the mana base also has some goodies. Four copies of the new Soulstone Sanctuary, which is a bit different from most other creature lands, because once we activate it, it's not going to stop being a creature, although it is still a land. And then a 3 3 creature with vigilance means we can can attack with it and still potentially tap it for mana, and because it has all creature types, it's also a cat, so it will benefit from the plus one plus one from Arabo, Patchwork Banner, and Caracal also giving it a lifelink. And then Cavern of Souls can make all our cats uncounterable, so that's very useful against blue decks. Can occasionally name a Golem as well to make sure Roaming Throne resolves. And then a two copies of Three Tree City. Now this land is legendary, so we can only have one in play at the same time, but I think the payoff is worth it, especially once we start going wide with Arabo and Regal Caracal. We can make a lot of extra mana with it, making it easier to empty out our hand. And then just 15 basic planes. You could consider splashing a second color, but there's not too many payoffs. Offs. There might be some green-white cats worth looking at, but by keeping the deck monocolored, the mana base is also a lot more streamlined. And then finally, another note is that you could try to go for some more life gain synergies and then make room for a Janice Pride Mate. Right now, I don't think it's quite worth it, and we've got enough going on with Roaming Throne and Caracal at the top end, but it's certainly worth thinking about. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a decent hand. Not a lot of our top ends, but just a good aggressive start. Facing a red deck, so not necessarily a bad place to be. It's actually interesting which one drop to lead with, since we can already trigger Vanguard on turn two. I think we start with Savannah Lines. Doesn't attack as well into a 1-1 creature, whereas Vanguard could turn into a 2-2. 
But if they do have removal, I would rather have them take out the Lions than the Vanguard. Right, opponent plotting a slick shot, so that's always scary. And yeah, just gonna empty out my one drops. And now we're still attacking for two damage, so nothing of value was lost. I'm gaining one life per turn, quite useful against the red deck. And flanker can gain two more. So this is a matchup where drawing Regal Caracol could be a lifesaver. And get lost to answer slick shot might also be important. Just an attack for one. Okay, and Arabo, an excellent draw. So we can start there. And then we'll see if they take out Arabo, if they're maybe waiting to set up an ambush with a Swiss spear. We don't have to attack. We're fine just building up our board. Because if I attack and our opponent takes out Arabo, they get to eat Savannah Lines for free. So that could get messy pretty quick. So we'll just pass. And our opponent's gonna take out our legend. Can put an upkeep stop, since we could technically scry before drawing. Opponent's splashing a bit of white, so... They might be on the Boros Charm build as well. And yeah, they've got a creature-heavy draw, so maybe they won't get too many prowess triggers. Do I want to play Flanker here? I don't think so. If we draw Roaming Throne, I would rather run that out. And yeah, 3-3 three, three City actually nuts us some mana here already. So we'll have to play that now. Can play Helpful Hunter, draw, and then play Flanker afterwards. Maybe looking for a Regal Caracal. Could have swapped the order as well. Alright, so another Arabo, I guess, isn't bad. And we want a Squire afterwards. Not really. Although it would enter with Arabo in play, potentially, immediately picking up some counters, but it's going to be a while before it flies, which is what we really need here. So I'll keep Arabo, and then now we can set up an attack. Fine if these trade. Although I guess with our Abo incoming, we might actually prefer keeping our cats alive. So now double slick shot, two cards in hand at 21. I don't think we're in danger of dying. And Bold Wave will kick them off. Three damage, trigger prowess and slick shot. We're at 18. And then they've got one card remaining. So what's the one card that deals the most damage here? Uh, I guess a Boros Charm can either deal 4 damage or, in this case, they're gonna get more out of the Double Strike mode, giving Slick Shot Double Strike would uh, deal 5 damage, basically. So then we're taking 15 from the Slick Shots, could afford to take 2 more from the Lava Runner, so at the very least we'd have to block the Swiss Spear. Yeah, my first instinct was trade Flanker for Lava Runner, but now I think we might want to just chump Swiss Spear and then set up lethal on the way back, because we'll have Arabo incoming, giving the team plus one plus one, and that should be just enough. Now if our opponent's got a removal spell, they might also end up holding it, and then they can take out Arabo and things get more complicated, but they are sort of incentivized to fire off any burn spells they have now to trigger prowess and slick shot. Our opponent is thinking about it. And yeah, there's the Boris Charm, indeed going for double strike as opposed to four damage. So very important to keep all those modes in mind. Indestructible can also be relevant if a lot of creatures end up blocking. But uh, yeah, we survive at one. So the life gain from Vanguard, incredibly relevant. And now Arabo should help cross the finish line. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We do need to draw a couple extra lanes. Would like to find something to do before turn three. But we do have the powerful combo of Arabo with a Roaming Throne facing the Aura deck. Definitely a matchup where we typically will need some removal, since our opponent can build up a huge threat. 
Looks like the blue-white variant. And the Hulk Creeper on too. Alright, for now, play our Abo and hope our opponent does not have a removal spell for it. Could have also considered using Cavern to name Golem to make sure Roaming Thrones are uncounterable, but don't really expect any counter spells out of the enchantment deck. Ethereal Armor is still acceptable. So possible our opponent has the Flying Aura available at instant speed. I will take the opportunity to chump since we might not get the chance later. And a Ghost Vacuum we don't really care about. So we immediately get two cat tokens. May as well attack. And our opponent did turn the Hall Creeper into a scavenger, so at least we can block it now. And yeah, with an extra land we get to play Caracal, or we can take the time to deploy an extra roaming throne. Sadly, our opponent does have the Sheltered by Ghosts. Taking out Harabo, at least the Roaming Throne is safe. But that is definitely their best card in the matchup, since they can give their Scavenger Life Link, Ward 2 as well. And I probably still chump. Alright, so we could try Caracal, or we can go Roaming Throne into Vanguard, and then. Next turn, Caracal gets to make even more cat tokens. And we gain a little bit of life off Vanguard in the meantime. But yeah, racing a 7-powered lifelinker is going to be tricky. That's where the lifelink from Caracal will come in handy. Once again, I'll chump. And our opponent keeps up a bunch of mana. Yeah, time for Caracal. So we get to make six cat tokens now. Vanguard triggers three times. And attack. Now if our opponent does have an aura they can play at instant speed with the two scavenger triggers, it's possible they can trade for a roaming throne. It's gonna be a Flood Pits Drowner tapping down Vanguard instead. Yeah, I think it's fine to attack. So they do have the rescue. So they can trade scavenger for roaming throne. But we got our value out of them. Bone's gonna cash in the Drowner, get rid of our 1-drop, that's fine. And a Trapped in the screen as their last card. Gets rid of Caracal. Now the tokens themselves still have Life Link, but we will lose the plus 1 plus 1 bonus. Bonus stays back, doesn't even want attack. And this is the perfect spot for the Helpful Hunter. Could even play Flanker first, just to scry a bunch and make sure we draw into what we want. Which I also don't hate. And then finding a removal for Scavenger, of course, would go a long way. Sky Knight Squire would have been great earlier. Probably not good enough right now. Even though we also get to add more counters with the Roaming Throne. And Savannah Lions also not too exciting. Alright, let's hope we draw into something powerful here. Find another Caracal and a Get Lost, perfect. Alright, so now we just need to hope that our opponent does not draw another Hexproof spell. Whether it's Faithlight at 2 mana or another Shard Mage's Rescue. 
And it's just going to be a Gremlin Tamer. That's beatable. Their opponent hangs back once again. And now we're just going to get lost and pay the ward. And this way we'll get our legendary cat back as well. Now Rabo immediately making a pair of cat tokens thanks to Roaming Throne. And pumping the team as well so we can set up a powerful attack. And Ghost Vacuum in the meantime Exile Scavenger. And let's get in there with everyone. And yeah, I believe our opponent even has to block, otherwise they take lethal, so it trades for a flanker. And falls to 4. We're back up to 49. And next turn we can give all our cats an additional plus 1 plus 1 at lifelink. Line 6 enables a ghost vacuum to make a bunch of 1-1s, one but that's not going to be good enough. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a functional hand. Always happy to see a Rabo in our opener. We get to draw a bunch of Hunter, and then 3-3 three, three City can maybe give us the extra mana boost we need. Facing turn 1 planes, double planes, and carrot cake. So if this is a kind of tokens deck with a bunch of sweepers, we could be in trouble. Our deck does not beat Sunfall very often. But uh, yeah, we can certainly try. For now, play Arabo. Hit you for two. So, 3-3 three, three City currently mana neutral with three creatures out. Opponent passes. Okay, so for now, can go for a helpful hunter. Make some more tokens with Arabo. And find a squire. Well, possible opponents playing Wrath of God nowadays. Can't attack with Arabo since they would double block with Carrot Cake. So let's just uh, send in the other two twos. But I think it's worth it to play Squire, because the next turn with Caracol it represents a lot of damage. If they double chump, we know that our sweeper's incoming. Alright, so now I may not want to play the Squire anymore. Since they might just Wrath next turn. Which is unfortunate. It's not a guarantee, they could still be on Sunfall on 5. But Wrath of God is now in Standard, or Lockdown. So at least Arabo still survives. And then now, it's probably just Caracol, even though I miss out on all the Squire triggers. I guess going Squire into Flank are still decent, plays around a Sweeper somewhat, while still triggering Arabo a bunch. So don't hate that. And hope they don't have an Elspeth Smite. They don't. Flanker can also be decent post sweeper in the sense that you can put a bunch of plus one counters on it. Opponent runs out Beza, so there's no advantage to playing flanker in response. Yeah, pretty good here. Opponent getting a lot of value. Alright, so we're just gonna run out flankers, cry, and then we'll see if we can find something interesting. Another squire. I mean, at this point, we're just hoping our opponent does not have another sweeper. So maybe keeping squire and then playing that plus caracal thanks to 3-3 three, three city is fine. So, step one, play Squire. Can I also attack with a Sanctuary here? I might be able to actually... Three Tree City taps for 
I guess still only seven mana, so yeah, I wouldn't be able to also animate Sanctuary. But that's okay, just play Caracal. Get a bunch more triggers. And we are attacking for 12 in the air. Flanker on the ground, and then sure we'll send in the three threes. And just cross our fingers that there's no sunfall next turn. Alright, so we get to see the new damage rules here. So just put the fish first. Don't get to assign the exact number anymore. But it's also interesting to see with the new foundations combat mechanics. Alright, let's see. Do you have a board wipe? You do, and it's Sunfall as well. Not what we wanted to see. Squire can play it and then get in with Sanctuary, but it's probably too little too late. Bones at 5 with an 11-11 Incubator. Although we are at 45, so we do have some time to maybe grow the Squire and fly over. And lay down arms answers the Sanctuary. So what's our best draw here? Another Caracal, probably. Well, that's uh, what we needed. Still doesn't let Squire attack past Incubator. But it helps us go wide, so if they don't have another board wipe, we might get there. I guess never mind, it does fly now. Three or more, so... Do you have spot removal? You do, not on my watch. Thanks, Al's an attacking creature. And now Sunfall number two. Alright, can't catch a break. So yeah, it turns out that the uh, mono board wipe and removal deck is pretty good against the cats. Carrot cake will gain them more life. So at this point we would need to draw into like a bunch of helpful hunters, into more regal caracals pretty much. Get lost can take out the incubator. But, uh, yeah, I guess we can also destroy the lockdown to draw. Maybe that's better. Just draw two and hope to find something exciting. Can do it now. Alright, another Arabo and a Vanguard. So, we're going for it. Third time's a charm, I guess. And double Fountain Port can also make more tokens. Opponent's just gonna draw with them instead. Also, good use of the map tokens, and finally, Caretaker's Talents as a more long-term card draw engine. Level up, make an extra rabbit token. Opponent's still at 8, another banner. So yeah, I guess that actually does it. If we attack with everyone, including our Rabo, they've got 4 blockers. And then we're getting in for at least 8. Wow, I can't believe we actually got there. So yeah, never give up. You never know when you might sneak in a win. Awesome! On to the next one! Okay, we're on the play with a promising hand. Squire first, and then can play Arabo, immediately pick up a bunch of extra counters. And then if we play Hunter after Roaming Throne, we'll get to draw two, so that's also better. 
opponent mono black so far, so can certainly expect some removal. So Rambo is unlikely to survive, but then at least we'll get some counters on the squire. And uh, sure, we'll play a sanctuary. If blue mana comes out next turn, we still have the option of cavern naming golem. So yeah, this is a pretty strong curve to start out. But I imagine we'll see a removal spell here. Alright, go for the throat, Squire. At least Arabo is protected from a Liliana of the Veil edict. Opponent's playing white as well. So not sure if it's just a mid-range or control deck, or if they might have some life gain synergies. Overlord points towards a reanimator deck. And yeah, right of the moth, if they have it turn four, they can bring back Atraxa. And we don't have a removal spell at the ready. So that's going to be rough. For now, play Roaming Throne. Still pretty decent. With Arabo in play especially. And then if our opponent does bring back Atraxa, we just got to hope to draw into a Get Lost with a two card draw from Helpful Hunter. And it's going to be a Zombify, another four mana reanimation spell in addition to a Rite of the Moth. So, yeah, the reanimator deck is even more consistent at reanimating on turn four now. And our opponent found a temporary lockdown as well, so... Even if we do deal with Atraxa, we might still be in trouble afterwards. And they've got another Zombify to do it all over again. No finality counter on Atraxa like you do on Right of the Moth. Well, I could try Squire into Hunter, but even if we get a huge Squire, Temporary Lockdown's still gonna answer it. So there's probably no point. So it's just gonna be Hunter and then hope to and draw into a get lost, pretty much. Caracol and a planes. So yeah, that's not going to do it. Probably no point in playing anything else out. And we don't have any good attacks either. Yeah, that's uh, probably game over here. Turn for Atraxa is pretty strong when you can't remove it right away. If we did, we would have been attacking for a plus 5, 13, so not quite lethal. But then we could probably figure out a way to cross the finish line. Opponent does cast a lockdown. At least our Rabo and Roaming Throne are still safe. And another Overlord. Volgavoth in the mix as well. And another Roaming Throne. Well, we could wait to play Roaming Throne before playing Caracol. Although maybe now is the time to go with uh, Sky Knight Squire. Yeah, I guess we can go Squire into Roaming Throne. It'll pick up a bunch of counters so it can maybe compete with Atraxa. And then next turn, drop Caracol. Had we played Roaming Throne first... Yeah, I don't think we end up with as large of a Sky Knight Squire, so this seems to make sense. Eighteen, eighteen. The same turn we played it as well, so that's kind of impressive. But another lockdown can deal with it. And if Atraxa attacks and we trade, they can just bring another Atraxa back. All right, split skin, that's fine. So there is hope that just by playing Caracol and pumping the team, we can go wide enough. But it's just all the life gain from Atraxa that's making it difficult. So do we see Volgavoth maybe zombified? 
At least the Sky Knight can keep Volgavoth at bay, but nope, Pun has got another lockdown, sadly. So... Now... We'll probably have to attack just to gain some life back, although with double Vanguard... We can also passively gain life without necessarily needing to attack into Atraxa, because all our attacks are pretty bad here. But yeah, I imagine playing Caracal is still worth it, just to set up something for next turn. That's a lot of triggers. And yeah, no attacks. We're at 9, so we're not dead on board. Although if our opponent gains 7 up to 37, I don't think we'll necessarily be able to attack back for lethal. But yeah, still kind of impressive that we're presenting this board after surviving double lockdown. Opponent will also get an author overlord end of turn. So they do have quite a few blockers now. But yeah, if we can just keep drawing regal caracals and attacking with lifelink, we can maybe still get there. There's also an important distinction between the cat tokens that don't naturally have lifelink and the ones that do since the tokens from Arabo are just 1-1s, one -one, whereas the ones from Caracal have lifelink inherently. So the different arts are actually pretty important to keep track of. Bones looking at their graveyard, so maybe they are looking at Valgavoth here. Or they could go for another Atraxa if they want to draw more cards. Ooh, Shieldrets. Well, that just kills me. That's unfortunate. And yeah, there's nothing I can do about it. Well, that Shieldred was very unexpected. Helpful Hunter also would have been kind of awkward in the face of Shieldred. So yeah, had we played another Vanguard, we actually would have been able to take an extra turn, but then we also wouldn't have been in a position to set up a good attack. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a fine hand. There's an argument for waiting on Vanguard until after we deploy the Squire, so it can immediately pick up a counter. But we're also likely to find other creatures we can play in the meantime. So I'm okay playing it turn 1. Even though we can also play it the same turn as Banner, using that mana right away. Let's see what we're up against. Turn 1 Islands. Opponent passes, so they might have a cantrip in hand. We're just gonna hit for one, play Squire. So our opponent is blue-black, true to their sleeve. Okay, Cavern of Souls, we can maybe hide and make something uncounterable. Also might want to name Golem if we draw a Roaming Throne. And then still play Banner before attacking. Opponent could also have some flash creatures that can trade for my creatures here. But it still seems worthwhile to attack if this resolves. And if it doesn't, then they won't have any mana left. Could just see a removal spell. It's going to be a Drowner, so they can trade for the Squire, keep my Vanguard type down. Fair enough. And Slasher's next. Okay, so... Can play Savannah Lions. Probably going to take the hits from Slasher. And keep Get Lost to answer the blood letter. Since destroying slashers not a great long term plan. This was also one of the decisions on which two mana removal spell to play. If we had ossification, for instance, we get to take advantage of all the planes. And we have something that exiles a card like Slasher. But Get Lost being instant speed has its advantages as well. And then end of turn, we can still activate a Sanctuary, turn that into a 4-4 thanks to Banner. 
so that can help apply more pressure. Okay, and then Cavern, still naming Cat at this point over Golem, can send in another Sanctuary. Although, then if her opponent does play a Bloodletter, I would have to trade Sanctuary for Slasher, which is not pretty. So I think I still keep up double get lost for now. And attack. Our opponent's got a Fairy Mastermind. Do we want to get lost that one? We we'll trade for Savannah Lines otherwise. So it's not a disaster. I think it's still worth it just to keep the extra creature for Vanguard as well. And our opponent's got plenty of map tokens anyway, so an extra token probably doesn't matter. Still have four mana to activate the other Sanctuary, so they are decent in multiples, thanks to the Vigilance. And now a Mockingbird would make a Flying Slasher. Alright, um, I mean, Get Lost doesn't help here, so... That'll happen. So now our opponent can just kind of turtle up, but no, they're still on the offensive. So we'll take it, and then the most mana efficient place animating another sanctuary for now. And then if we get lost the uh, mockingbird, we should get there. Awesome. Actually, pretty cool synergy here with Mockingbird for X equals zero basically turning into our land. So usually don't get to see that. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Missing maybe some one or two drops, but Arabo can hopefully make up for it as by far our most important creature. This in combination with the Roaming Throne is kind of where the deck gains a lot of strength. Alright, play Helpful Hunter up against a burn deck with a new Bolt Wave. Can only go upstairs, but quite efficient. 3 damage for 1 mana. We now also have to watch out for Boros Charm dealing 4 damage for 2 mana if they're splashing white. And uh, yeah, even though there's a chance they take out Arabo, I'm still tempted to play it here. The alternative is play a Patchwork Banner, because their opponent is keeping up a burn spell. They could take out my cats. But uh, yeah, even a 3 damage Lightning Strike can still take out Arabo post Banner. So I think I still go for it. Possible they just save up their burn spells to go face anyway. And our opponent takes two. And yeah, Lightning Strike goes upstairs. So we'll see if this is a race we can win, or if our opponent's packing additional board wipes in addition to the burn spells. They are playing white, so Boros Charm could certainly be in there. So yeah, this version of Red Aggro is a lot different from the pump spell variant we've gotten used to, and Roaming Throne was an amazing draw. This aggro deck is not something you can easily beat with a few removal spells. They are probably a turn or two slower than the red deck with pump spells that can already win the game on turn 3. But the upside of burn spells is that they're a lot more consistent, and you can also use them as removal. So they have more interaction, and the opponent's forced to shock Arabo, otherwise we would have Gotten two cat tokens right away. But still happy to have Roaming Throne. Can I also gain four life with a flanker? In addition to playing a banner first. And yep, Boris Charm puts us to ten. So half of our life total. If our opponent's playing second right, we could just be dead here since we are at ten exactly. It would be pretty funny. Alright, just a slick shot. And another Boris Charm. So we're at three. 
So this flanker is going to be pretty important. So now the question becomes, do we go Squire? Then this can make four mana. Still can go Banner into Flanker afterwards. I think I still like Squire into Flanker just to get the extra counters. And give Flying to the Squire a little bit faster. But yeah, the life gain here is of utmost importance. And then Caracal would be amazing the next turn if we can survive. So yeah, all comes down to the opponent's next turn, if they can deal 7 damage or not. Another Boros Charm would do it. So a Spear is acceptable. Can block that all day long. Maybe should have double blocked in case of a Monstrous Rage. Uh, just a Lightning Helix, our opponent's one point short. And they're not going to get another turn here. As our opponent explodes, not quite a lethal attack unless we activate Sanctuary, but with Caracol it was going to be a lot more than that. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hands could use a couple extra lanes, but I'll try it. Arabo into Roaming Throne is what it's all about. Put on Black-White. Could be another Reanimator deck. For now, play Savannah Alliance since we're not going to enable Vanguard on two. And a hair apparent. Interesting. Okay, I'm intrigued. So that's the type of card where they want to have most of their deck be a bunch of two drops. And then during Innocence can draw them cards. Makes sense. Don't necessarily want to trade for the Enduring Innocence. So we'll just get in with Vanguard. Well, our opponent might end up out tokening us with the Hera Parents. So making a huge flyer with the uh, Sky Knight could be important. For now, just another Enduring Innocence. And Banner's not bad either. So a 3 tree City already nuts us an extra mana. Although I'm probably just playing a Roaming Throne here. And then Vanguard also triggers twice. I don't think I want to send in the 2-2 necessarily. Because next turn we can make it a 3-3. Three, three. If they want to double block, that's fine. They don't. And our opponent's going to try and gain more life. Well, currently they're pretty far behind on board. But, uh, yeah, if they've got a board wipe here, they can easily recover. Another hair apparent goes to the graveyard. And they run one out. So just a 2-2 for now. Could have considered playing Flanker in upkeep to scry. But uh, then we would have wasted our 3-3 three, three city mana. So instead... We can play Banner. Name Cats. And I don't mind an all-out attack here. Can still flash in the Flanker. If our opponent trades for Arabo or Roaming Throne, I'll be forced to play Flanker now, otherwise I can maybe wait. Especially if there's a board wipe, we can give it a bunch of extra plus one counters to maybe cross the finish line. Opponent is just jumping for the most part. The lifelink would keep them alive here. Alright, that's fine. 
So they're at four. And then the hope is that Flanker can still maybe beat a board wipe if they have it. Hair apparent, that's fine. I'll draw two cards. But no token. Alright, so we got to see our mono white cats in action. And yeah, I'm quite impressed by some of the individual cards, especially Arabo helping us go wide very quickly and synergizing beautifully with the Roaming Throne. The Sky Knight was also quite good, especially in combination with the aforementioned cards. So there are some powerful individual cards for sure. As a whole, the deck might not quite be competitive enough to give you a great chance on the ladder right now. So maybe we'll have to wait for a few more expansions to give us some more powerful cats. But there's definitely some good foundations here, pun intended, for a cat deck to exist. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.